The passage starts out with those of us who come to Jesus, hear his words, and what? Does them is like the following. Got it? So I'm about to illustrate what the following is. The first one is you have to start with digging deep. So imagine with me, I'm digging down deep into the soil of the earth, and I'm looking down, and I'm digging, digging, digging deep. By the way, this is what Scripture says. It says this. I tell you the truth. So Luke 11, I tell you, ask, and it will be given to you. Seek, and you will what? Find. Knock, and the door will be open, and it will be open to you. For anyone who asks, receives, and the one who seeks, what? finds, and to the one who knocks, it will be open. In other words, Lord, are you really the God of creation? Jesus, are you, do you really love me? Dig deep, and then you're going to find the rock. This rock, in the past it says, so we're going to dig deep, and we're going to find the what? Rock. And it says this, the rock represents God, Jesus Christ. Isn't it awesome that we can trust the God from the beginning of time who knows, who does know, who knows your thoughts, who knows your weakness. He knows everything about you. And he, with his breath, created all humanity. And he just said, let it be. And it what was. That's the one that is the rock. That is the one that we can trust with all of our heart. And if we just get that, if, we, if the whole sermon ends with God is our firm foundation, or if God is the rock that we build our foundation on, let's just say amen and walk out right now. It should change our life. Just right there. Psalm 18, verse 2, it says, The Lord is my what? Rock. My fortress and my deliverer. My God, my rock, in whom I take what? We need to take refuge in God. We need to take refuge in Christ. He's my shield and my horn of salvation, my stronghold. In Psalm 62, it says this, he, what's the next word? Alone. He alone. If you get that, it'll change your world. He what? Alone. Just like, let's just mic drop and walk out. He alone. He alone is my rock and my salvation. My what? Fortress. <laughs> oh, yes. And, and I will not be greatly what? Shaken. Psalm 18, verse 31. For who is God but the Lord, and who is a rock except for our who? God. Can I get an amen on that? So if God is your rock, period, where does Jesus come and play? Well, God is Jesus. Jesus is God. But he classifies who Jesus is in Scripture. Jesus calls himself the cornerstone. The cornerstone. If God is your refuge and strength, he has to be your cornerstone. The cornerstone in building, the cornerstone is laid what? Is laid what? Is laid what? Is laid first. At the head corner um, that governs every other corner and every angle in the entire building. And thus determines... The cornerstone determines the place of every other stone is to be laid through the death, resurrection, and the ascension of Jesus. He, Jesus became the chief what? Cornerstone of the spiritual temple called the church. Ladies and gentlemen, hear me closely. Without God at the center of your life. Without Jesus being the cornerstone, there's no, other, there's no other foundation to be laid on him. So we dig down deep. We go to Jesus. And I love what it says in Colossians 1.17. He, Jesus, is before all things, 
and in him all things what? Hold together. But we have to talk about this foundation because all throughout Sunday school we've, we've learned, and if you're a religious person, whatever, we're like, well, Jesus is the foundation. No, he's not. He's the rock that our foundation is laid upon. Let me say that again. Jesus is not the foundation. He's the rock that our foundation is built upon. So you might ask, what is our foundation? We hear we need to have a sure, strong foundation. And it even talks about, so we're going to dig down deep, as we did. We're going to find the rock, but then we need to build our house upon the foundation that's on the rock of Christ. This is what it says in Ephesians chapter 2, 17 through 20. But he came, but he came and preached peace to you who, who are far off uh, and the peace of those who are near. For uh, through him, we both have access to the spirit who is the what? Helper and the spirit preaches the what? Truth the Spirit of the Father, so then you are no longer strangers and aliens, but you are fellow, what? Citizens with the the saints and members of the household of God. Watch. That's the salvation part. That is God. Build on the what? Foundation of the, this is the foundation, the apostles and the prophets. Old Testament, New Testament foundation. Jesus is teaching. Christ Jesus himself being the what? Cornerstone. In whom the whole structure, the whole life, the whole build of your life is being what? Joined together. So when the rock... And the foundation comes together. That's where stability happens. With who being the cornerstone? Jesus being the cornerstone. Grows up into a holy temple in the Lord. In him, you also are being what? Built together into a dwelling place of God by the Spirit. So the early church, so the early church understood this. The early church understood this in such a way that they were building their life on the prophet's teaching, but they also, this is what it says in Acts chapter 2, verse 42, and they, the church of Jesus Christ, they devoted themselves. Devotion is an action word, the doing of Jesus' teaching. They devoted themselves to what? The apostles' teaching. And who did the apostles learn from? Jesus. They devoted themselves to what also does it say? The fellowship. They devoted themselves to each other. What does Jesus say? If you love me, you will love your neighbors. They devote themselves to the apostles' teaching, to the fellowship. What's the next one? Breaking of bread, which is remembering the cross. That's the Lord's Supper. The breaking of bread is coming together and remembering that Christ is the cornerstone through his death, burial, and his resurrection. And they devoted themselves to what? To the prayers. Ladies and gentlemen, if you were to leave right now and I don't show you anything else, build your life upon God, Jesus being the cornerstone. Build your life upon his word, the church. Prayers and remembering the cross, and then just walk out of here and do what he says. So, that's my encouragement to you is to build your house upon that. Nothing else matters. Let me read this statement. A well-built house or life stays connected to who? Jesus. Who is the what? The rock. And is Building on the foundation of the keyword devotion of Jesus' teaching through the apostles' teaching to the church, to the cross, and to prayers. And then just what? Do what he says. 
But unfortunately, that's not many of your lives. Because many of your lives um, kind of look a little different. It kind of looks like sand. How many guys like building sand castles? Raise your hand. Sand castles. <laughs> I love going to, I used to live in Florida, and the beach is, is other than the sand and the sun, it's awesome. Um, so the beach, you, <laughs> you go to the beach, and in Florida, they actually had competitions, building these magnificent, magnificent, magnificent sandcastles. When the tide rose, the sandcastles dissipated. By the power of the sea. Ladies and gentlemen, I asked a post, a, a question earlier this week, and this is what it was on, on Facebook. Let's go to the Facebook. Okay, so the question was, by the way, if you're not on our group page, join our group page. What or who do people place their faith, strength, and trust in that is not of God? And many people said, like remit. Like Abe says, romantic relationships, romantic relationships, simple community by chance, um, personal self. Well, yeah, they, they place their, more of their faith on each other than they do God. False teachings, money, alcoholism, addictions, um, self again, um, political leaders, as, as Rachel said earlier, um, up there, um, our jobs, our career, our money, myself. Work, money, deeds, power, professional players like celebrities, entertainers, doctors, um, possibly their spouse or their family, um, and what they see on TV and status. Ladies and gentlemen, all of those things, let me just say, for example, politics. Would you agree that people build their life upon their money? How about, how about like their own, their own status? It's like, man, I'm like a... I, People like me, yes. Or what if I like living up to the Joneses? Would you agree that's on there too? And if I'm going to emphasize again, political leaders. Um, let's just say the likes or the dislikes and comments on Facebook. What are some other things? Like five, five more, I think. What are some other things that people build their life upon that is not of God? Was that? The possessions, okay. I saw, I heard somebody in the back. Justin, did you say something? That, okay. Stuff, what's that? Work, okay, yeah, good, work. And again, we saw family there too. So you got the idea. So building our life on these priorities. I would even say I'm going to put on their religion. We can build our life on religion and good, doing good deeds. And let me just get one scoop. All right. So I want to illustrate this again. These sands represent the things in your life, and you know what they are, that you place as a foundation in your life to get you through. Your job gets you through. Your finances get you through. Your own mental state of being gets you through. Your woes get you through. Your depression actually gets you through. Your addictions get you through. That becomes your foundation. That becomes your focus. Your family, your kids, your spouse, you focus it on them and not the true foundation, which results in the following. Let me, Lord, help. Hopefully this illustration works. <laughs> I built a sand castle. Okay. All right. Let's go, let's go back to the scripture again. Notice. The other house, so this is the true foundation, and this is the one that we're making. This true foundation is building a house on what? On ground. So, um, Justin, if you can pull that up. The building their house, ruined life, built. It's a quick build. It's a very, very quick build on the ground. It's a quick build, and they didn't dig down deep. They just built it. No foundation. Notice, they didn't even have the rocks. They didn't even have the foundation. They just built their life upon what? Don't die now. Don't touch it. <laughs> okay. 
I want you to catch what Jesus is saying. Jesus is saying, if you build your life without a foundation, you build your life not digging down deep to God, we're going to find out what is going to happen. And the rest of the passage, it's going to fa- there's going to be a great fall. But how does the fall come? Well, Jesus talks about um, a stream, a flood that, that comes in the passage. And what Jesus is actually talking about is something called a wadi. Everybody say wadi. Wadi. So in Israel, this is what a wadi is. A wadi is a low, dry valley. The term wadi, again, is mostly used. So Jesus was talking about a wadi, is what he's teaching. In an Arabic-speaking part of the world, this word wadi mainly is used to describe a valley, a dry creek, and a riverbed in the Middle East or North Africa. So this is what Jesus is talking about. A wadi might be a stream, might be a what? Stream during the rainy season and a dry ravine during the rest of the year. Let me show you a picture of a wadi. So this is a wadi. So notice, it's sandy, it's ground. What Jesus is saying is, are you going to build your house here on the sand, you can quick build, quick build, quick build. You don't even have to dig down deep. Just pop up shop and you're done. That makes sense? Or are you going to build your house here? Where you're going to dig down deep, get some rebar in that, lay a foundation on the rock. So when the wadi is filled like this, Justin, this is a wadi being filled with the pressure of the flood breaking and the streams flowing in the Middle East. Ladies and gentlemen, the question really that we have to ask ourselves is, when the floods of life happen, and they will happen, because Jesus even says the word when, when the floods happen, when the streams break unexpectedly, the question is, will your house, will your life stand? So when the floods come, Will it stand? I'm getting a little emotional because most of your lives are right there. And I'm worried that as the flood of the end of time comes, you are more focused on the earthly floods and the earthly building of your kingdom and mine. Because, ladies and gentlemen, just like in the floods, the flood, Noah was righteous and he was saved by the ark the floods came unexpectedly and swept the evil away and another flood's going to come and the flood is called the return of Christ Jesus this is what it says in scripture Matthew 24 37 through 39 Notice who's speaking. This is Jesus' voice in Matthew. For as were the days of Noah, so will be the coming of who? The Son of Man, Jesus. For as in those days before the flood, they were eating, drinking, marrying, and giving into marriage. In other words, what he's saying is they were building their life on the temporal, earthly things 
of the world and of life and of the esteem and the joys, and they forgot about the flood coming. Until the day where Noah entered the ark, and they were what? And they were what? Unaware until the flood came and swept them away. So will be the coming of the Son of Man. Catalyst. What is your life built upon? Is it frivolous things of this world, or is it on God? Come to him. If you are a believer of Jesus Christ, be devoted and hear him loud and clear. God's word, the prophets, and the the teachings of the apostles... Let that be your foundation, New Testament. Let your dedication to being a part of the church, loving each other, be a foundation built on God, built on Christ. Let us be a praying church, a devoted to God in prayer church. Let that be our foundation. And then let us always remember the cross. That once we were dead in our sins, but now we became alive in Christ Jesus. And because of this, ladies and gentlemen, we can be assured that when the flood of Jesus comes, you're going to be safe. But also when the floods of this earthly life happens and you go through hell on earth, (laughs) you will still have a firm foundation in Christ getting you through. May that be for you, may that be for me, and may we never forget that this life is temporal. As it says in Matthew chapter 6, 19 through 21, do not lay for yourself treasures where? On earth, where moth and rust will destroy it, and where thieves will break in and steal. But lay for yourself treasures where? In heaven, where neither moth nor rust can destroy, and where thieves do not break in and steal. For where your what? Treasure is. There your what? Heart will be. Let your heart be on Christ, the foundations, not of this world. And may we today come to him, hear his words, but now do what he says. Lord, to you be the glory and the honor and the praise for being the rock, our refuge, and our strength that we do not need, that we need, but we do not recognize that we need until maybe right now. Lord, we come to you saying, be the strength that we need. And please forgive me, forgive us for all of our unrighteousness, worldly focus. Because, Lord, one day you will return. The flood will come unexpectedly. May we be aware now and be devoted to you, your word, to prayer, to the church, and to the cross. Knowing that you are a cornerstone of our life. People will hate us. People will despise us. But when the floods come, may we rise up to be the men and women that we are called to be. Lord, as we sing this song, Or maybe there are people here that need to just bow their head and come to Jesus. May they say yes to you. May they recognize that they're a sinner in need of a Savior. And Jesus Christ, you came, you died, you rose again for the forgiveness of their sins so that they can come to you. And may they place their faith and trust in you today. Lord, if there's any people in this room that have come to you and just heard about you but have not dived deep into the comprehension of your teaching, may they de- devote themselves to that. And then may we all go and do what you say. So, Lord, as we sing this song, maybe we need to come down to the crosses and to repent.
May we need to bow our head in our seat and repent. May we turn from the sandcastles that we have built our life upon, and may we place our complete allegiance, repenting from our wrongdoing and putting our attention back on you. Thank you for all you do and allowing us to come back to you, our firm foundation, our refuge, and our strength. I pray all this in Jesus' name. Let's all stand.